Hi guys, uh, Peter here, as I've promised you for a very long time now. Here is our video memo for maths. Let me get started right away. Okay, uh, question one. Question one is usually an algebra question. It asks us to solve for x and then gives you three questions, which by the way was terribly numbered. I apologize for that. Quite a few mistakes in this. Okay, so there we go. 1.1.3 okay first question solve for x we notice immediately that it is a quadratic question which means we need to write it in a quadratic format okay x squared minus 5x minus 2x plus 12 is equal to 0 x squared I shouldn't write actually in red so I can show you the marking Okay, negative 7x plus 12 is equal to 0, so that we had x is equal to, uh, or x minus 3x minus 4 equal to 7. I think one or two people got this wrong, and it's really because they've simply not worked that far in the course yet so um i i don't i don't know how to explain this any other way this is very simple what must i multiply to get positive 12 and um that when i add it up gives me negative 7 well it's negative 3 and negative 4 multiplies to give me positive 12 and therefore when i add them i get negative 7. so now I've got two things. When I multiply these two things, I get zero, which means either this thing must equal zero or this must equal zero. One of the two must equal zero because when I multiply them, I get zero. So this can only be zero if x is equal to three and this can only be zero if x is equal to four. So basically how this marking worked is you got one mark for writing it in the standard form, one mark for uh, correct factorizing and then one mark for solving it correct into two answers. Excellent. Question two. Question two is uh, 1.1.2 2 to the power of x minus 3 times 2 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 2 negative 2 to the power of 3. Now here much fewer people got this correct and, and uh, this is a common 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 question so I do want to encourage you to focus um, as I try and explain it. Remember in a quadratic uh, sorry this is an exponential equation. Exponential equation means I've got a base and an exponent Okay, and my unknown is in my exponent and I'm going to try and get my unknown by himself. If I can get my unknown by himself equal to an answer, I can use logs or various methods to actually just find what the value of x must be. But this is the aim. Just like in the previous one, the aim was to write it in uh, the standard form. This is the standard form for a quadratic equation. Once I get here, once I got here, I knew what to do. I could factorize. Once I get, yeah, I know what to do. I can either use uh, logs or maybe same basis, both sides, whatever. But that's going to be the aim. Now here, if you don't know your exponential rules, you're going to fail. And and this is where a lot of people made a mistake. To get these two, they simply multiplied the bases here. Please, guys, you can't do that. If you don't have the same exponents, you can't multiply bases. So stop it. Just stop it. Okay, now, anyways, how are we going to do it then? Well, in order to get b to the power of x, in this case, we can immediately see it must be 2 to the power of x because that's the simplest exponent. And so this exponent here is giving me, is going to give me problems. So I'll have to start by first just writing this as times 2 to the power of x times 2. 2 to the power of negative 1 is equal to negative 2 to the power of 3. We'll deal with this one later and um, as soon as we know what on earth is going on. Next what we'll do is we, you'll notice that um, now I've got two terms. Both terms have a 2 to the power of x in it. So I can just take it out. 
it's, it's a common factor I can say 2 to the power of x now one person I remember did this 3 times 2 to the power of negative 1 that's what was left here but they forgot that there's still a 1 left here when we multiply back we must get the same answer so that's it negative 2 to the power of 3 now my whole aim is to get to the power 2 to the power of x alone so all I need to do is divide with this bracket but what you should notice this bracket is simply a bunch of numbers there's no unknowns you can just use your calculator to get this value okay don't even need your calculator hopefully 1 minus 3 times 2 to the power of, our power of negative 1 negative 1 means I'm, mul I'm dividing with it actually so 3 divided by 2 means it's uh, 3 halved if I 3 divided by 2 is 3 halved so I get 1 minus 3 halved is 1 and a half so 1 minus 1 and a half gives me negative a half so I must divide both sides with negative a half and that will just cancel this and there I go I've got 2 to the power of x is equal to now 2 to the power of oh, the negatives just cancel um, to this a half can just be 2 to the power of negative 1 and so I have 2 to the power of 3 divided by 2 to the power of negative 1 that is just if I subtract this 3 minus minus 1 I'm using my exponential rules I get 2 to the power of 4 and so x is equal to 4 okay why do I say x is equal to 4 because 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 4 which means that x must equal 4 got it good well if you didn't if you use your calculator you would have gotten 2 to the power of x is equal to 16 and then you could have also said oh I know what exponent I must give to hopefully you do to make it equal to 16 I must say it's 2 to the power of 4 so if 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 4 then x must be 4 got it good okay let's get to the next question okay this one was very disappointing well not really few people got it right but most people still do the same thing and it's wrong okay let me show you so here's the question we're supposed to find x it's an inequality which means it's not an equality you can't treat it like you would treat an equation well you do to an extent we first write it in the, the basic form okay there we go just writing it into ax squared plus bx plus c and then yes you do factorize okay you do factorize and so we get x minus 6 x plus 5 I'm not going to go over factorizing you should be able to do it but now guys it's not an equation we can't now just go and say well x minus 6 is greater or equal to 0 or x plus 5 is greater or equal to 0 the moment you do that I, st I simply mark just mark it wrong okay um, because you have no idea what you're doing at that point and it's not difficult you should know what you um, what to do at this point at this point you should recognize that this is a parabola that's a parabola and I'm saying my parabola is greater or equal to zero so I draw just a rough parabola this is my rough parabola I select the part of the graph that's greater or equal to zero in other words above the line I see that the parts that's above the line oh and I know that where it cuts this x-axis is at negative if I make this equal to 0 I see x is equal to 6 and x is equal to negative 5 so this must be negative 5 and that one must be 6 and now so if I'm using the parts that's greater or equal to 0 I know I'm working with these parts these parts right here and so those parts are associated with the outside of my x-axis notice that if I was working with everything less than zero I would be working with the inside so this is x is less or equal to negative 5 or x is greater or equal to 6 and that's it it's not difficult so so please get it 
Okay, thank you very much for watching. In the next video, we'll do uh, question 1.1.2. I'll see you there.